We are facing a global ice age and the Milankovitch cycles are to blame. In this video, you can find out what this mysterious process is all about, why it has always determined the fate of the planet and when the ice age awaits us. So be sure to stay tuned until the end and if you like it, I'll be galactically happy about a thumbs up and a comment because that way, the YouTube algorithm will show this video to even more people. Thank you friends and welcome. Are you more of a summer or winter person? Let me know in the comments. I like both. I always spend several months in Sicily in summer and in Norway in winter. But it could well be that I'll soon be cold even in summer in southern Italy because the winter is coming. The reason for the next ice age is the so-called Milankovitch cycles. To understand this, let's first clarify how the seasons we are used to are actually created. The Earth rotates in its orbit around the Sun, however its axis is not completely perpendicular to this orbit. It is tilted at an angle of just under 23.5 degrees. This means that one part of the Earth is tilted towards it and the other part is tilted away from it. This different angle of incidence of the sunlight creates the seasons. And this also explains why there are no distinctly different seasons in the equatorial region, because here the incidence of sunlight is always uniform and in most representations it is also limited to this movement of our earth around the sun. But this is highly incomplete because there are many more celestial bodies in our solar system and they all have a greater or lesser effect on each other. Although the sun accounts for 99% of the mass of the solar system and is therefore definitely the strongest gravitational influence, the gravitational force of the other objects, also has an effect on us. Just as not only the earth attracts you, but you also attract the earth. However, if you noticeably attract the Earth, then it's time to go on a diet. Long story short, many other objects also influence the Earth. The Moon, of course, but also Jupiter, the heaviest planet, Saturn, and to a much lesser extent, the other planets. Our solar system is a finely tuned system, like a kind of cosmic clockwork. They all pull and tug at each other, and this has an effect on our Earth, more precisely on the inclination of the Earth's axis, on the exact shape of our orbit and on the ecliptic plane, in the plane of the planet's orbit. All these factors are subject to complicated but regular cycles due to the physical influences within the solar system, and these are the Milankovic cycles. The Serbian mathematician and geoscientist Milotin Milankovic was the first to recognize this in the 1920s. So we are talking about several astronomical cycles that have a massive influence on our planet and the climate. And despite this immense importance, the average person has probably never heard of the Milankovic cycles. But let's change that and take a look at the most important cycles. Perhaps the most important Milankovitch cycle is the elliptical cycle. Over a period of hundreds of thousands of years, the Earth's orbit around the Sun becomes less elliptical and then more elliptical again. Logically, the less elliptical the Earth's orbit, the more constant its temperature. When the orbit becomes more elliptical, there are strong temperature fluctuations and the maximum temperatures in both directions become more extreme. It may seem a little confusing, but the Earth reaches its closest point to the Sun, the so-called perihelion on the 3rd of January, and its furthest point from the Sun, the aphelion, on the 4th of July. So in the Northern Hemisphere winter, the Earth is closest to the Sun, which makes our winters a little more pleasant and our summers a little milder than they would otherwise be. In the Southern Hemisphere, the opposite is true. Summers tend to be particularly hot and winters tend to be particularly cold. This is despite the fact that we are currently living in a rather circular phase of the elliptical Milankovic cycle. If the Earth's orbit becomes more elliptical in the next 10,000 years, these seasonal tendencies will intensify and winters and summers in the southern hemisphere will become much more extreme, while summers in the northern hemisphere will become even milder and winters even more pleasant. We in the northern hemisphere are therefore absolute beneficiaries of the elliptical Milankovic cycle Sorry, dear kangaroos. But the whole thing is not that simple because there are other Milankovic cycles, for example, the precession cycle, which influences our Earth's axis. We've already established here that the Earth's axis is tilted by 23.5 degrees and that this is how the seasons are created, easy. Except that the Earth's axis moves. Here at the planetarium, we have a great model that illustrates this. As part of the precession cycle, the Earth's axis performs a kind of circular movement and this takes 26,000 years. 
This is also why Polaris is not always the North Star. A few thousand years ago, the Earth's axis was pointing somewhere completely different. So not only do we have Northern Hemisphere privilege, we also have Polaris privilege, because we live in the exact time when the Earth's axis points to this star. Incidentally, only from the Northern Hemisphere. But don't rest on your laurels, because the precession cycle will reverse the Earth's inclination. In just under 13,000 years, we will have summer in January, and in Australia, we will finally be able to celebrate a white Christmas in December. And then we will be the ones affected by the more extreme seasons caused by the elliptical cycle. You can say a lot about the Milankovitch cycles, but they are fair. There are tons of other Milankovitch cycles, some less consequential, some more. And the interaction of all these cycles leads to something that is as strange as it is frightening, ice ages. That's always when it's time for ice cream, isn't it? Some of the Milankovitch cycles fit perfectly with the ice ages in the Earth's history. For example, a cycle in which the Earth's orbital plane around the Sun rises and falls relative to the solar equator over the course of hundreds of thousands of years. The extent to which this can trigger ice ages is not yet fully understood, but the timing fits so perfectly that scientists are convinced that there is a connection. One theory is that the Earth's steeper orbit around the Sun is caused by a cosmic dust cloud that blocks some of the sunlight leading to much lower average temperatures. This means that it is only a matter of time before the Earth changes its orbital plane. As part of this Milankovitch cycle, average temperatures fall and an ice age awaits us. Some of you will now object. The evidence is totally thin, but I want an ice age and to see mammoths. This is where one last Milankovitch cycle comes into play and it is very likely to bring us the Ice Age. I'm talking about the axial cycle. We have already heard that the precessional cycle causes the Earth's axis to move in a circle. The axial cycle causes its angle of inclination to change. The 23.5 degrees we have just heard about are not set in stone. During the axial Milanovic cycle, which lasts 41,000 years, the angle of inclination of the Earth's axis varies between 22.1 and 24.5 degrees. We are currently in the part of the cycle in which the angle of inclination decreases. But shouldn't that mean that seasons become less extreme and move away from an ice age? Nope because summers become milder with a lower tilt of the Earth's axis. After all, no part of the Earth is now pointing extremely towards the sun. The winter ice will then hardly melt in summer and become a permanent part of the landscape. The result, huge parts of the Earth will freeze over. The more ice there is on the Earth's surface, the more sunlight is no longer absorbed but reflected back into space. An intensifying process that will eventually lead to an ice age, in the truest sense of the word, a snowball system. We are currently living in a short warm period. This is also known as the interglacial Holocene, a short exceptional period with a mild climate that began almost 12,000 years ago. So this is a brief anomaly within a larger ice age. And thanks to the Milankovitch cycles, this anomaly will come to an end at some point and the ice age that is actually prevailing will take over again. I'm repeating myself, but, but winter is coming. However, this could still take several millennia, which in geological and cosmic terms is of course not very long at all. And of course you have to take into account that human activities are also known to have an impact on the climate. The relationship between the anthropogenic greenhouse effect and the Milanovic cycles is something we are still at the very beginning of researching. I find this topic incredibly fascinating. It shows once again how much our lives are determined by space and how little we know about it. About as little as we know about the interior of our planet, the Earth's core. It influences the global climate and the Earth's magnetic field which protects us from influences from space and researchers have made a shocking discovery. The Earth's inner core has suddenly stopped moving and is now now slowly rotating in the other direction. You can find out how this could have happened and whether we need to worry in the video below, be sure to click on it. And if you want to support the channel, you can also browse through my space store where you'll find the shirts from the videos, real meteorites, plush planets and much more. Every purchase supports my work, otherwise I'd say see you in the next video, take care friends.